They're talking. He's also... Hello? Can you hear me now? Hello, testing, one, two, three. I can yell louder if that's any better. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Philip Lindsay, also known as a follower from r r rancidbacon.com. Okay, good afternoon everybody. Uh, I'm going to start with a pop quiz, so I hope you've all uh, prepared for it. Um, how many people here are, uh, have done some development with Android and Arduino? Okay, about half a dozen. Uh, how about people who have done Android development? Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, okay. Uh, and how about Arduino development? Yeah, nice. And how about people that have done development with neither Arduino or Android? So we've still got a wee way to go yet then. Um, if that's the case, I will give you an overview of uh, uh, the Android and Arduino side of things. Uh, Android uh, mobile operating system, uh, to varying degrees, open source or free software. Um, and uh, yeah, it's probably on maybe half the phones in this room, I don't know. Uh, but you can also read Wikipedia to find out more. Um, Arduino is a uh, electronic uh, prototyping platform or as they call it, an open source electronic prototyping platform. Uh, yeah, John will remember that, this historic occasion. This was the first Arduino project I uh, ever worked on uh, with John and another guy. Um, and basically it was a remote control car that you could use a Nokia um, uh, 700 and uh, dial up a distance that you wanted to go, it would transmit the distance over Bluetooth and uh, then the car would move forward. Well it would move forward if you kind of gave it a little push with your, your, with your hand because there were so much batteries and, and other things on it that it was a little underpowered. So uh, this also is a helpful reminder that if your first Arduino project doesn't look as slick as some of the stuff you've seen out there, um, this is how everything starts off anyway. So um, there's Basically, the idea is that it makes it easier for non-technical people or technical people without hardware experience to get started with producing hardware. And uh, the, uh, there's multiple form factors. So uh, at the top, we have a lily pad, which is designed to be sewn into clothing and other uh, things like that. Um, we've got a, uh, a, a smaller size, so if you cramp for space. Um, and then we also have, uh, on the other side, the Arduino Mega, where uh, if you need more RAM or connections or flash, uh, you can store it there. Um, one of the other cool things is that it's, it's expandable with shields, um, so basically you can put a shield on the top uh, and stack them up so that if you want some additional functionality you can benefit from that. So this particular shield is a USB host shield, coincidentally. Uh, so again, Arduino is uh, open, the board designs you can download uh, and create your own. Um, the IDE is uh, written in Java and uh, is GPL licensed and actually is based on a project called Processing. Um, and then underneath it uses AVR GCC, which is a, uh, obviously based on the standard GCC uh, compiler chain, uh, but it also has the benefit that if at some point you say, oh, I you know, want to drop down to a lower level, you don't have to kind of relearn everything, you just carry on down. So the, the language is, um, it's called the Arduino language, uh, but in fact it's a, a basically a subset of C and C++, but nobody says that because we don't want to scare anybody off. Um, but the cool thing is that you can learn as you go, and then everything that you learn is still applicable uh, down the road. So you think, well, that sounds pretty cool. I've got an Android phone, and I think I can learn some of this uh, Arduino stuff. Um, why on earth would I want to connect the two of them together? So you can do things like customize your, uh, your phone hardware. So you might say, hey, I've got this awesome new idea for um, making it so that whenever I uh, tap my foot, it answers the phone call so I don't have to uh, wave my hands around to, to access it. Or you could go the other way and say, hey, um, I want to take something that's normally uh, from my phone and display it in some other way. Um, so, for example, you can also uh, take the functionality of the phone, so GPS or accelerometer, uh, and, and provide that to your Arduino. So instead of having to buy an accessory shield, you can actually just use your phone as a, as a super duper accessory shield. Um, or you might have an idea for something like a custom dock so that you, when you come home, uh, you plug your phone in and it charges it and does something else to your, uh, your home as well. 
So uh, the next question is, how do we connect these two things together? Well, uh, until uh, sort of midway through last year, there were a number of unofficial solutions for connecting things together. Uh, one of them was uh, Amarino, uh, Amarino uh, that still exists and allows you to connect um, the Arduino using Bluetooth and, uh, and so you'd need a Bluetooth shield on your uh, Arduino and then use the Bluetooth functionality of your phone. Uh, you can uh, also use a Spark Fun uh, Yo-Yo, uh, which was designed to use with uh, a debug functionality on the phone, so you had to turn on debugging, but then it would allow you to communicate with it. And then, of course, you also had uh, the option to use uh, Ethernet uh, over Wi-Fi or um, wired. But then uh, at Google I.O. last year, uh, Google announced the Android Open Accessory Protocol, um, which uh, if you've been at John's session, he uh, gave a view overview of. Um, so basically it meant that you could uh, create new accessories and attach them to your phone or tablet without having to go through um, uh, designing all of the hardware yourself. So of course, you know, you're thinking, okay, big announcement at Google, they'll have some really, um, uh, great example peripherals, which they did. Uh, one of them was a giant labyrinth game, which you could uh, use a tablet uh, to control a bowling ball as it uh, was being rolled around this uh, huge labyrinth game. Uh, or you could connect to an exercise bike and have an exercise bike as your peripheral, uh, and as you biked along, it would keep track of uh, the various statistics. Uh, and then not long afterwards, uh, Harman announced that they were going to support some of this in their uh, in their sound uh, systems related to dashboard control and that sort of thing. And I saw this stuff and I thought, hey, there's some kind of cool stuff here. Um, and I happened to have a, a shield that was uh, compatible with, with the software. And so I thought, oh, I should try and build something as well. And uh, the project uh, ended up getting featured on the Make blog and on Hacker Day and uh, on some Russian blog that... Uh, called Crazy Dev, and apparently I'm a handyman, so that was good. Um, and then uh, it also made it to Engadget, which was the first time I'd ever had a project on Eng Engadget, which was kind of uh, educational. It led to, pro uh, to comments like these. <laughs> and these. So, you may be saying to yourself, well, what's this uh, project that you know, kind of causes so much consternation to the uh, esteemed readers of Engadget? <laughs> and it is, in fact, the dual display Nexus One. So I know that uh, lots of people have a problem where if you're uh, playing a game full screen on your phone uh, or uh, some other full screen app, when you have a message come through, uh, you don't know who the message is from. Uh, and if you, uh, maybe you're playing a game, you lose track of time because you can't see the time on, on your phone, and then you get late for your appointment. So the dual screen Nexus One uh, solves this problem. So if we apply some power, So this is the dual screen accessory, and uh, when we connect it to our phone, you'll notice the hardware has a couple of kinks in it at the moment. So we connect it to our phone, and when it starts up, it uh, lets us know at the top that we've got an accessory connected, and then nothing more happens. Uh, except on the accessory, we now have a clock. So if we go into uh, a game, I'm partial to Scooter Hero. And start playing. Uh, hopefully Mark can now send me a text. Yes. 
and while nothing has appeared on my phone, uh, underneath on the dual display, it now shows me who's sent me a text and uh, the first few words of it. So I can decide whether or not I want to answer it. And seeing Mark's been extremely helpful to me over the last couple of days, I will indeed say, hi, Mark. So this is a dual display Nexus One. And uh, so inside the box, we have um, uh, an LCD proto shield um, that I put together, um, which helps me use less pins, and then also uh, a Mega a Arduino Mega ADK board, which is um, this this piece along the bottom. So, and they're just stacked up uh, like so. So that's the dual display Nexus One. Uh, not available at stores yet, but I am taking orders if you're interested. Yeah. <laughs> so, that's very good. Uh, so, Android Open Accessory Protocols, we've seen an example of it. How do they actually work? Well, it's USB based, but it's a little bit odd. Uh, basically, uh, we'll get into some of the details, but because of the way that uh, there were existing hardware restrictions. So lots of phones, most Android phones, uh, when they were released, wouldn't have USB host support. Some tablets did have it, uh, but they weren't very common. So Google was wanting to find a way to make this technology work with existing phones without requiring hardware manufacturers to change what they were already doing. And part of the Android spec required that the phones had to uh, support USB um, and acting as a device, so they knew that they could rely on that. Uh, one of the other big benefits is that it's officially sanctioned. Um, so there were existing solutions, but none of them had the support of Google as, a, as an actual part of the Android platform. Uh, and then also, unlike some other phones, uh, operating systems, you didn't actually have to get certification for your hardware. You could make something and then connect it um, and then sell it if you wanted to. Uh, the hardware is um, open, uh, it's based on the Arduino uh, and the reference platform, so they were building on existing uh, technology, and uh, the circuit board reference designs were available as well. So this led to a large number of uh, different companies and individuals uh, making their own little uh, twist on the ADK board. Uh, and then also, again, on the software side of it, they made use of existing libraries uh, and built on top of that rather than doing everything themselves. So, uh, in terms of the communication aspect of it, uh, with standard USB, you have a host and you have a device. So normally you'd have your PC, uh, and then you'd have an accessory of some sort. So it might be a mouse or um, a flash uh, USB stick or something like that. So if you have an Android device, when you connect it to your computer, uh, it would appear as a mass storage device, and that would allow you to transfer things uh, towards the phone. And in this uh, scenario, the device is uh, an accessory. Now, you would think that if you were going to provide an accessory to your phone, then the accessory would be an accessory, and the phone would be the host. Uh, but that's not actually the case when you use the uh, open accessory protocol. Uh, the accessory becomes the host because um, it needs to have the intelligence to interact with the phone, and because the phones didn't have uh, the host <coughs> capability, they couldn't magically make that appear in hardware. So you're in the weird situation where the accessory is actually taking control of, of, the, um, of the communication between them. Which also brings with it uh, the uh, need to actually uh, have the accessory power the device because for USB host to work, well, the spec says the host must provide um, power to the accessory. Um, this, uh, as uh, John noted, there are ways around it, um, but uh, at the moment, it means that the biggest consequence of this is that sort of if you want to have a device that you take around with you as an accessory, then you need to provide some sort of power uh, with it. Um, or if you've got a dock, uh, then you'll be providing power anyway, so it's not sort of a big issue. And because of this, I think sort of docks are the easiest way to get started because you don't have to worry about the power. Um, there is existing technology um, called uh, USB on the go, uh, which was designed specifically for this, uh, for a scenario where you had two battery powered devices um, and neither one of them had to act as host. Uh, Google in their wisdom uh, chose not to support that. Um, I don't know whether that's because the existing phones didn't support it and so it didn't actually solve their problem or, or not. 
Um, they have said that they're, they're wanting to work around uh, it in the future, uh, but it's been nearly a year and there hasn't been any more sort of comment on, uh, on the technology. So uh, Google sort of released the initial designs and released the code, but then sort of haven't made any more comment on, on those things. So uh, sort of how, how obviously supported it will be in the future sort of remains to be seen. Google's a bit of a black box on, on that case. So you're thinking, this looks cool. I want to try some of this stuff out. Um, this slide is as true now as it was nearly a year ago. Um, this is still uh, quite early days for the technology and um, there's hope for things to sort of, uh, uh, sort of improve a bit. Uh, people are starting to document things in, in, in a slightly better way. Uh, but it is very much sort of you need to try things and, and see if they're going to work for you. So um, with the original uh, release of the Open Accessory Protocol, uh, we, it supported an Android 3.1 and above, which was used on tablets, and uh, Android 2.3.4 and above. Uh, it's an, still an optional feature, so that means it is possible for a phone to have uh, 2.3 or uh, 0.4, but for the phone manufacturer to say, well, we're not actually providing this, um, uh, this, this technology. Um, the, uh, as far as I know, it should also be supported in um, Ice Cream Sandwich. Uh, then, in terms of the uh, phone hardware, uh, when it was released, it supported the Nexus One phone, which is what I'm using here, uh, supported the Nexus S phone and the Motorola Zoom tablet. Um, since the release, uh, I've tried it with uh, an HTC Flyer, and that worked okay. Um, and I think now there's a lot more, sort of, probably hardware released in the last maybe sort of three months or so um, is more likely to support it. But again, you need to kind of check to see uh, whether or not a particular piece of hardware will support uh, the open accessory protocol. Uh, you do have additional options. Um, if you've got a phone and you want to root it, then I think some of the more recent versions uh, of the custom ROMs do have support for it as well, so you can try that out. Um, the, uh, the other side of the equation in terms of uh, how you connect your Arduino uh, and provide the hardware support, um, there's a, a lot more options. Uh, the original uh, Google Android ADK board was basically a custom made board um, by a company uh, in Japan and uh, they were about three or four hundred dollars because they are really limited run hardware. Um, so as soon as the stuff was released, um, other companies started uh, producing boards based on it. Uh, there were also, because it was based on existing technology, uh, there was already boards out in the marketplace that would actually um, support it with a little bit of uh, changes. So I had a, a, a SparkFun USB host shield um, and with a little bit of modification to the library that was able to work. The SparkFun USB host shield uh, was uh, itself based on the circuits at home uh, USB host shield and this uh, was created by the uh, developer of the USB host library. Um, so this, this shield was supported first um, by the library and then um, other boards were built to the same sort of specification. Uh, the Arduino uh, dev team themselves released a product uh, that supported it, the Arduino Mega ADK. Um, so this is the same as an Arduino Mega, um, except it has the USB host functionality on the board as well. So you've got a bunch more uh, memory and stuff because it's the Mega. And uh, then uh, there's a whole bunch of other ones that have different sort of unique uh, takes on the board. Uh, so the demos that I'm using here, I don't think any one demo uses the same board as another one, um, including uh, the Freetronics USB Droid, uh, which you may be familiar with the Freetronics company. <clears throat> um, so the, there was a number of libraries that you needed uh, to, to support it, the Android Accessory Library, which was created by uh, Google, and then the USB Host Shield Library, which was created by uh, Circuits at Home. Um, now, there were some incompatibilities uh, between different versions of the library. That's slowly starting to get a little bit better, um, and uh, hopefully within the next couple of months, uh, there'll be sort of a single download thing that you can download and, and have re everything working at once. Uh, the code that I've got running on most of these things, uh, I've been using um, uh, Arduino uh, 0022. Um, there, as John mentioned, someone else has released a 1.0 compatible version. Um, I have also got a, a, a 1.0 ver uh, compatible version. I haven't yet uploaded to Git, but um, it'll get there eventually. So uh, now you're going, okay, we've got the hardware sorted. Um, I've seen the stuff, uh, the demos of things. You know, I've seen John's demos. Um, 
looks really cool. I'm a little bit apprehensive about uh, maybe writing the Android side of the code. It's Java, maybe I haven't had much experience with it. So I'll go over some of the um, steps that you need to, to go through to write the Android application side of it. Actually, no, I, I wouldn't do that to you because uh, it's actually kind of a major pain in the, uh, in the butt. Um, I uh, wrote the uh, Nexus One display uh, using the Android app, and it's uh, if you're used to programming uh, with Java and Android, then you'll probably you know you, it'll just fit into that paradigm. But if you're coming from the position where the only coding that you've done is is from the uh, Arduino side, uh, then it's quite a lot to uh, deal with Eclipse. Uh, then deal with the, the SDKs for um, the different versions of, uh, of Android and uh, the, the style of sort of indirection. And there, it's not, there's not a lot of example code out there. Basically, there was what Google released and everything else is kind of based on that. And they were you know, supporting phones and tablets and multiple orientations and, and sort of like multiple layers of indirection. So it was quite a lot to be used, uh, kind of learning a new technology and, uh, and also uh, you know, trying to get um, your own code working. So uh, I was kind of thinking, well, this is going to be a pain for people that only have Arduino background. Um, maybe there's some way to make it uh, simpler for them, which uh, led to the development of Handbag for Android. It is called Handbag, of course, because it helps you accessorize your phone. So uh, the, the key thing with uh, Handbag is that you can write uh, and create Android accessories without writing any Android code. So you can achieve this by installing the Handbag app on your device. So there's one app for, for as many accessories as there can be. And then the key thing is that you actually create the user interface and functionality in your Arduino sketch. So you uh, define how you want your user interface to look. So you'll say something like, um, I want to have a button, and then I want to have a text box, and then I want to have a label. And um, when you connect to your phone, then the Arduino will upload the user interface to the phone. And then when you interact with the buttons, those messages get sent back to your Arduino sketch. And you've got to you configure it by, by uh, having a callback. So you might say, when this button is pressed, I want to call this Arduino function. And then the Arduino function might toggle the state of an LED. Um, but the key thing is that instead of having to have both your Arduino code working and, um, uh, and also develop uh, uh, Android code at the same time, you can just focus on the uh, Arduino sketch. So even if you can write Android code and you're quite happy doing it, um, you can still use Handbag to sort of focus on one side of the task at a time. And then once you've uh, got uh, it working with Handbag, you can go, okay, we've got the, the main guts of it working, now we can work on an Android app. Or if you don't want to write Java, then you can just uh, leave it as your accessory. So um, let's uh, do uh, another demo, or another couple of demos. Uh, so this is a, a, a multimeter demo, because you can never have too many tools. So, um, We have our uh, phone, and then we have our uh, extremely sophisticated uh, multimeter. So what happens is when we plug some power in, and then we plug our phone in, So, we've plugged it in, uh, the accessory is said to the phone, hey, I'm an an a handbag accessory, uh, and then the handbag app is launched. Then the Arduino is said, okay, I want to have a, um, uh, a label at the top. I wonder if we can get that a little bit more in focus. Um, I want to have a label at the top, uh, then I want to have some, uh, a big number, and then these buttons here, um, if it is going to work. Uh, say um, display, uh, this is a toggle button that display, switches between displaying the multimeter. Um, so at the moment this is just showing a counter, um, but if we switch uh, to there then this is actually showing uh, the multimeter. Uh, 
And then we can also, uh, just for the sake of it, um, toggle the counter on and off. So we've paused the counter. Um, you can uh, reset the counter. Uh, so once again, none of this, uh, none of the actual counting functionality or anything else is happening on the Android. It's all happening on the Arduino. So um, if I disconnected this, the counter is still running in the background, and then it'll just update when I uh, connect back. Then, of course, everything needs a um, toggling LED. So we have an LED uh, connected as well, which will turn on. Uh, if it's actually on screen, which is not quite. Uh, so we can also uh, toggle the state of, uh, of this LED um, here. Uh, and so for the multimeter functionality, we switch it into uh, multimeter mode. And then <clears throat> if you're familiar with uh, how the Arduino board uh, is laid out, you'll know that we have um, power supply headers on it. So we can just connect to uh, ground and it shows us that uh, zero volts. Uh, it can connect to uh, five volts. It tells us that there's five volts there, and we can connect it to the 3.3 supply, and it tells us that it's roughly 3.3. So uh, not a particularly functional tool, but uh, enough to kind of show you that um, you can uh, sort of have relatively sophisticated interfaces even with a, um, a small number of different um, types of widgets. Uh, and then with I disconnect the phone, then it will come up and say, uh, hey, I need to have a Android uh, handbag device connected to me, so please do. So that's the multimeter. And then we also have Uh, so again, this is using um, the uh, SparkFun USB host shield um, and then just the standard Arduino Uno uh, on the underneath side. Um, there's also, uh, again, uh, SparkFun's got a uh, thing that has, uh, essentially is like the Arduino Mega, um, that has uh, the Mega and uh, USB host functionality on one board. Two cool. Um, so the next demo is an LCD scroller. So another example where this situation is, uh, or where this technology is, is useful, is you might have a device uh, that's sitting out somewhere. And every now and again, it needs some configuration. But you really don't want to have to have um, uh, things being configured with you know, uh, a permanent user interface on the device itself. So you can uh, go, OK, uh, my phone is going to be my user interface, uh, and that way I don't have to have buttons and, and extra screens and stuff on, on my device. So this will just uh, sit there and scroll happily. And we go, OK, well, we really need to update this message. So we connect our phone, and hopefully it will focus. Any day now. I don't know why it suddenly decided that that's the. Doo -doo -doo. Uh, okay, anyway, so uh, the big button at the top uh, says scrolling on off, uh, and you'll notice in the background it's still scrolling there. Um, so we can turn the scrolling off, and that'll pause the scrolling, so it's sort of no longer blurry and in that corner. Wow, that's really terrible. <laughs> uh, and then it also has a uh, text box that we can um, change the message on. Uh, 
Uh, so we can just use the standard keyboard, change the message. Start the scrolling back up and it's confused by something, that's for sure. Sorry? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Need to restart cheese. Uh, ah, cool. Cheers. Thank you. Hey. Uh, if um, yeah. So uh, so we've now modified it and then uh, disconnected the phone and, and now it's back scrolling. And so uh, the message is also stored in uh, EEPROM, so uh, it'll uh, be maintained through uh, power uh, on and off. Now. You may be going, well, you know, that's all very good, but you know, what happens if I have a really long message that I want to uh, be scrolling through uh, or displaying on an LCD screen? So uh, I've got a solution for that as well. Um, here we have another LCD. And uh, so you're like, okay, well, how about, can I store my messages on an SD card and then uh, be able to have them stored on that so I don't have to enter in a new message, but I want to be able to change the message as well. To which I say yes, because uh, the USB droid, which is this board underneath from uh, Freetronics, uh, has both the USB host functionality and the SD card functionality on it as well. So we can actually, uh, Again, every time when I'm connecting this, this there's, there's no separate application. It's just one application that then has all these uh, different user interfaces. And uh, so I can plug this in. And the new user interface uh, with that is a sophisticated display manager app. So uh, when I hit next message, it will search through the SD card for uh, a message file, uh, which ends in .msg, and uh, the text of the message is hello world. And you know I don't want to type that multiple times. So we just click the update display button, and now our hello world is without punctuation. Uh, it's a little hard to see the difference, so we'll look for another file. Um, so again, this is going through the SD card, looking for .msg files, and then uh, showing you the content of them, uh, and then updating it. So, ah, okay, here's my, uh, my promotional file. I want to change the this, this sign to say that. Um, so we hit the update display, and it changes to handbag, which has been read off. So you could have uh, any file on, on your disk which you read from. So obviously, if you have a more uh, you know, sophisticated piece of functionality, the fact that you can use your phone to configure it, but all the configuration is kept on an SD card, it gives you a lot of flexibility in how you um, configure these things. So you're obviously by now convinced that you want to play some with handbag and you want to see how easy it is to actually write a handbag sketch. So we've got a case study which is uh, toggling the state of a LED. So this will be the app that we want uh, the user interface to have, uh, basically a button and then some text. So everything starts at the action callback. So this is what's going to get called when you uh, press the button. 
Um, so in this, it's simply saying, okay, digital pin three, we want to turn it on, and then we want to turn it off if it's on. So then you uh, set up the user interface like this. So you have an object which is uh, permanently there called handbag, so it's just like serial or something like that. And you say add a label, and then you have the text of your label. Um, and then if you have uh, a button, then you supply the, the text of the button and then also a callback um, that, uh, that will be called when you um, press the button. So it's like JavaScript, you would have like an on-click handler or something like that. It's the same sort of con uh, um, concept. And if need be, you can actually alter the text and the functionality uh, or the text later on. So you can uh, say set the text of the button to be something else or set the label to be something else, which is like uh, what the multimeter demo was constantly updating the value of the label. Uh, a question? Uh, yeah, so basically it return, uh, the question is how do you refer to the widget after you've added it? Uh, basically when you do the add uh, functionality it returns um, a widget ID, um, which I'm not using in this situation. Uh, then there's some boilerplate uh, which is uh, used to um, initialize the handbag and, and Android accessory libraries. Um, there's a bunch of additional functionality that you can have happen automatically. Um, but we'll skip that in a moment. And then you just have to um, have setup. So you provide setup with the user interface. So that means that every time you connect your phone uh, to the Arduino board, it will upload the user interface and display it. Uh, and then you have a loop which um, just has to go through and say, hey, what's happening on the USB, if there's something that needs to happen, you can do it. So in this case, the toggling is all happening when you press the button, it sends a message saying, hey, um, button was pressed, um, what do I have to do uh, now? And then the Arduino will toggle the state of the button. If you wanted it to do something else, so like in the scroller demo, um, while it's sitting in the loop, it's scrolling as well, um, but it's not waiting for something to happen on USB. Uh, so that gives you the flexibility of um, uh, of things. So that's that's uh, the most straightforward way to get started. Um, you can see just from these examples, even having the ability to have text edit, uh, label and buttons give you quite a, a bit of flexibility in terms of, uh, of functionality for a user interface. Uh, so the only other question is uh, what do you want to make your phone or tablet do today? So all of this is uh, open uh, license under an open source or free uh, software license. Uh, it's up on GitHub. Um, if you go to handbagdevices.com, um, it will take you to uh, a page which lists um, sort of how you can get started with this. Um, and you can follow the um, project logs on that on my site, Labradoc. So, any questions? I see one there. Um, just, just under the covers, are you actually generating a unique app um, f every time you do a sketch for the Android app, or do you have a, like a wrapper? Because I know there's the Android processing project that lets you create Android yeah. apps from processing. No, so um, the the way that it works is you have one app that's uh, installed on the phone, which is essentially a shell, and it knows how to receive a user interface definition, and it knows how to send back messages to the Arduino to say um, a button has been pressed. Oh, sorry. Didn't you also had a, have that little bit of code that when you press the button, it was sending, a, it was doing a function call or method call to s tell the Arduino to do something? Yes. So that that's all built into one application. Oh. So so the the Android app essentially has no knowledge. All it knows is display the user interface and um, and then send back. Uh, whatever someone is doing to the user interface back to the Arduino. So yeah, the app itself doesn't actually get updated. So that means that uh, you can walk up to any phone, install the handbag app, and then install any handbag um, compatible accessory, and it will work on that device straight away with no further um, configuration. Do you have a graphing or plotting widget? Sorry? Do you have a graphing or plotting widget? Uh, no, currently uh, we don't have a graphing or plotting widget. Uh, I have considered it. Um, on, on the feature front, there's been a lot of things that I've considered implementing, but thought I'd better focus on like documentation and stuff first. Um, I know, it's weird. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, patch is gratefully accepted. <laughs> Uh, what sort of uh, state on the Android devices available to your 
your Arduino through handbag, can you access GPS and all of that sort of stuff? Uh, in theory, yes, you can uh, access, and that's again, that's where I'd like to uh, to get to. Um, but at the moment, it's it's all one way. Um, one of the issues is that if you have um, uh, an application that requires uh, like permissions to access that functionality, it means that any accessory that you connect has that um, permission as well. Um, so it's kind of like if if you install. Uh, one app or one accessory that you want to give access to say a GPS then in theory any accessory uh, can have access to it so that's sort of one of the questions about um, sort of I looking at solving um, but yeah certainly there's no reason why you can't um, say um, you know send back a GPS position or accelerometer position um, you just have to write the code <laughs> uh, anything else one down here In its current state, then, what's the current uh, level of complexity of the user interface? What sort of widgets, nested menus, functions, etc., that you can do with it? Do you have an example? Right. Um, so basically, the what you've seen here is like the full extent of, of what's available at the moment. So you've got labels which you can modify. So essentially, that can work as a display. Um, you've got uh, buttons, and you've got uh, a text input area which allows you to retrieve. Um, some sort of input from the user. Uh, so you may think, okay, that's a fairly limited range, but like even just with what I've shown you here, that still gives you quite a bit of flexibility. Um, and again, like I, it's kind of trying to strike that balance between like sort of adding features and, and getting it so that people can use it as easily out of the box as possible. But there's no reason why you couldn't uh, sort of add some additional functionality um, and just sort of extend the range of widgets that it's got. Um, so there's uh, sort of some measure of uh, the handbag app can uh, tell what version of the um, of the library is running. So if there's a, a change down the the uh, the line, then it can say, "Hey, it's time to to update your handbag app to support whatever this new feature is." So, um, does the handbag uh, app provide any facilities for uploading files from a? Uh, Arduino device? At the moment, no. Um, I did actually briefly look into uh, whether or not you could actually have the Arduino upload a full app as well um, and discovered that you can get apps down to about 2 or 3k. Um, but uh, so, yeah, like in theory, it, it would be possible to say upload an APK file, uh, write it to the SD card, and then install it from that. Um, but that's a left as an exercise for the viewer. <laughs> Um, as a question, are there any provisions for um, sort of converting a handbag app to a possible sort of retailable or sellable Android app itself? Um, uh, no, uh, at the moment. Um, I mean, you could... I mean, essentially, it's kind of the the idea is that if you were wanting to like make money uh, from it, then you would be selling the accessory, and the um, the app would kind of come along as free. Uh, I'm also thinking in terms of um, is there like a library or something to embed it within a say you've got a music app and you make it you make a remote or something? Can you embed that as a library for other applications to use? Oh right. Um, at the moment, uh, no, but um, there's no reason why you couldn't have that running as a service in the background. So um, actually, that was something I didn't mention with the... Um, so the Nexus One dual display uh, isn't written using handbag, but it runs as a service in the background. So you could, in theory, have multiple... Uh, multiple apps send, say, intents to the service and say, hey, I want to display this on the screen. So you could potentially, if you had um, the, a handbag service running, then you could just say, hey, um, you know, what message is being sent? Um, but yeah, at the moment, it's, it's monolithic. Um, so you can't just kind of pull it into an existing app. Any more questions? Yep. Uh, sure. Have you installed it? Yes. Cool. Yeah, one of the amazing things was when I was at a, um, 
sort of a, a function and someone had um, from HTC had one of these uh, one of the flyers and I like, installed the app and hadn't tested it with it before um, and uh, yeah it worked out of the box first time which is like that doesn't even happen when you're doing a demo with something you plan. Uh, let's try this one again. That was my question. So you've got handbag installed? Yes. Cool. Are we going to take bets? I like your confidence. Okay, so it's popping up and says, do you want to use this um, thing? And the only catch is sometimes the first time it runs, it doesn't, um, uh, doesn't quite react fast enough. So we'll try that. And... Okay, let's try resetting this. Uh, so apparently the answer is no. <laughs> <laughs> but he'll lend you his phone for a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> Have you tried Honeycomb? Uh, no. Ah, yes, because I think that was what the flyer was running. Um, thank you for that. Obviously, further development is needed. Honeycomb cool. Handbags yeah. Handbags on Honeycomb, right? Ah, we can check that out later. Yeah. Yep. Okay, we're now finished. So let's thank Philip for a very interesting talk. <laughs> Uh, yeah, come find me later or uh, we'll mostly hang out at the other...